Okay, for the first bit then, we've just got to factorise x cubed minus 4x. And it says completely, so that's a clue that most probably there's going to be more to this. Well, the first thing if you're factorising anything is to always look for common factors. And you can see that x is a common factor. It's in both terms. So I put that this is identical rather than equals, okay? pull out the x and then we've got x squared minus 4. Now, as I say, it did say factorise completely, which is a clue that this factor will no doubt factorise again. And it does, because this you should recognise as what we call the difference of two squares. Do you remember that if you have something of the form a squared minus b squared, this is the difference, the minus, between the square of two terms. This is identical to a plus b multiplied by a minus b, or a minus b times a plus b. It's not going to make any difference. And that's what you've got here. You've got x all squared minus 2 squared, the 4. So this is going to factorise then to be identical to x bracket x minus 2 multiplied by x plus 2 or x plus 2 times x minus 2. Not going to make any difference. Okay, so that's part A. Now when it comes to part B, we've got to sketch the graph then of y equals x cubed minus 4x. And so obviously we need to draw some axes and if I'm looking at this kind of graph, what I see is a positive x cubed graph. And positive x cubed graphs are going to generally have this kind of shape. So that's what I would be thinking of most probably. And we factorised it, and this is very useful to us because it will help us detect where the graph crosses the x-axis with ease. Because when y is naught, okay, this would have to equal zero, and it will equal zero at x equals zero. When x minus two equals zero, which would lead to x is two, and when x plus two is equal to zero, which leads to x is minus two. So we know that this curve, the cubic, crosses then the x-axis at minus 2, 0 and at 2. And so we should be able to sketch something like this into our graph then. Okay, so we're going to have it coming up through here, through the minus 2, going up like that, down, round and back out again like that. Okay, so that would be the graph then of y equals x cubed minus 4x. Okay, let's just rub that out, okay? Give us a bit more room. Well, that's part b. Now, we're told that on this curve here, which is called c by the way, let's just say that uh, we'll label that with a c there. Now, for part c, we're told that there's two points on this curve, a and b. And at A, we're told that x equals minus 1. So whereabouts would it be on the curve? We know it's to the left here, but whereabouts is it? What's its y value going to be? So we need to work that out. So we can easily do that by putting minus 1 back into this equation or into this one. Makes no odds. Well, if we do minus 1 cubed, Okay, minus 1 cubed, and then minus 4 times minus 1. What do we end up with? Well, we've got minus 1 here, plus 4, so that's going to be 3. So we know then that A has the coordinates minus 1, 3. So I'm going to assume then it's say there. That's the point A. Let's just label it there, A. Okay? We also have this point B at b, we're told that its x-coordinate is 3. So again, what's y going to be? Well, if we substitute 3 into here, we're going to have 3 cubed minus 4 times 3. 
which comes to 27 minus 12 which is 15. So we know then that B has coordinates of 3 and then 15. Alright, so we have B, let's say 3 across, 15 up. Again, this is not drawn to scale, but hopefully it gives you some idea. And we've got to find the equation of the line going through AB. Let's just mark it on, okay? So we've got a line looking something like this, okay? Now, although we've got to get this in the form y equals mx plus c, the best equation or the best form of a line that you can have is this, I feel. y minus y1 equals m bracket x minus x1, where x1, y1 is any point on the line, and m is the gradient. Well, we could use for x1, y1, say, a or b. But we need to get m, the gradient. So that's the first thing that we need to do. Get that gradient. Okay, well, what I'm going to do is just remove this, okay? So we'll just take that out, okay? And we'll work out what the gradient of a, b is going to be. So we'll just come down here. Now, to work out gradient, you should know that it is the difference in the y coordinates divided by the difference in the x coordinates. And we've got our y coordinates here for a and b, so we could do 15 minus 3, all divided by the difference in the x coordinates. And remember, whatever y value you start with, start with the corresponding x value. So we started with the 15, so we must carry on with 3 minus minus 1. 3 minus minus 1. You can do it the other way, it won't make any difference to the gradient. You could do 3 minus 15, all divided by minus 1, minus 3. Check it out, you should get the same answers we're going to get here. And that comes out to 12 divided by 4, 12 over 4, which is a gradient of 3. Okay, a positive gradient looks good because our line is sloping in the positive direction. Okay, it's sloping upwards. So that looks good. Now we're in a position to get the equation of the line AB. So we'll just say therefore equation of AB okay, is, okay, rather than writing equals there, is what's it going to be? Well according to this it's going to be y minus y1. Now I'm going to choose the point B say for my x1 and y1 values but you could equally choose A, and it would be a good exercise just to try that and see if you get the same answer that I get. Okay, well, taking Y1 to be the 15, okay, we have Y minus Y1 equals M, the gradient, which is 3, bracket X minus X1, and that will be 3 here, okay? So if we expand the bracket, we're going to have y minus 15 equals 3x minus 9. And then if I add 15 to both sides, I end up with, therefore, y equaling 3x. And we have minus 9 plus 15, which is going to give us plus 6. So there's the equation of the line then in the form y equals mx plus c. OK. Now we move on to the last part, D, and we're asked to find then the length or distance of AB, okay? And to get that, we basically use Pythagoras' theorem. It's essentially the square root, you should know this formula by the way, okay? The square root of the difference in the x coordinates squared, x1 minus x2 say, squared, plus the difference in the y coordinates, all squared. Alright? Okay, any of these results, by the way, can be seen uh, on my website. Just look under the various tutorials, okay? So, for this one, distance between two points. Now, if we're doing this then, okay, Let's just fill in our values. 
x1 minus x2. We can take our x1 to be 3, if we like, and then minus, minus 1. Okay, so we'll have the square root of 3 minus, minus 1, all squared. And then plus the difference between the y coordinates, 15 minus 3, all squared. Now it doesn't matter which way around you have these because even if you did minus 1, minus 3 and then squared it, you'll get the same result as this one. And that would be similar when you do 3 minus 15, okay, instead of 15 minus 3. 3 minus 15, if you squared it, same result. So don't have to worry too much about what your order is. Okay, well then, what do we get here? Well, that's 4. 4 squared is 16. And then this is 12. 12 squared is 144. So we've got the square root of 16 plus 144. In other words, the square root of 160. Now, we're asked to give it in the form k root 10. So that gives us a clue what's going on here because we can split this up to be 16 multiplied by 10, all rooted. And this is the same as the square root of 16 times the square root of 10. Well, the square root of 16 is 4. So we can have that as 4. Root 10, we don't know that, so we just leave it as root 10. And so this is identical to k root 10, where k equals clearly 4. And I'd encourage you to write that in, just to say that this is identical to k root 10. Okay, it gives the reader some idea what k is, okay, in cases like this. Okay, well, I hope that uh, gives you some idea of how to do that question then. And that brings us now to the end of this particular question. Okay.